Liberty University and Dr. Wilmington. Probably never heard of him. He was brought on as, uh, uh, he was one of my professors, but he was brought on as the dean to help Jerry Falwell get Liberty University up and running. And he thought, well, this guy's a good guy. This is a great idea. He prayed, very prayerful man. And he did it. So he goes on there. It's not just a bed of roses. All of a sudden, they're facing a million dollar debt to grow Liberty. Falwell has a meeting. He said, we need a million dollars. We're going to pray and fast. We're going to get it. God will not leave us. And they did. Wilmington admits, i got to be honest, I didn't think for a minute this was going to happen. I'm looking at Jerry Falwell thinking, this guy's got faith. I don't have faith. This guy is not for a moment doubting this. What happens? Jerry Falwell preaches a sermon. There's a guy that ran one of the term life back in the day, term life organizations, and uh, he walked up after service. And Jerry Falwell wasn't shy. He said, I need a million dollars, and God will deliver it. And the guy walked up and he said, well, I can't give you a million dollars, but I'll give you half a million dollars cash uh, today. And you send me a half million dollars of bills and I'll, I'll take care of them. Wilmington said, I, I was so humbled that I didn't, I didn't belong in the room with Falwell. He said, but I am so blessed to hang out with that man and learn how God moves. No matter what the size of the problem is, it's the size of your faith that's going to move it. And he learned. Faith is the victory. During Thanksgiving season, we all need to stand strong in faith. God loves you. He wants the best for you and your families. Be thankful in advance to God for all He's doing for you and in your life. As Jesus was feeding 5,000 people, the only miracle that was recorded in all four Gospels, Mark 6, 41 says, And when He had taken the five loaves of the two fishes, He looked up to heaven and He blessed Break the loaves, gave them to the disciples to set before them. The two fishes divided he among them all. What did Jesus do first? Thank God. Thank you for this. How many of us would have done that? Or how many of us would have said, well, they had only two fish. Only got two fish. Oh, give me ten people. I ain't got enough people. We would have worried. We would have looked at it like the world looks at it. Jesus said, yeah, we're. He blessed and he thanked God. And through that faith, what happened? That's where the power is revealed. God said, oh, I'm going to give you so much, you're going you to have trouble carrying back the leftovers. <laughs> so it's in our attitude, our gratefulness, our thankfulness to God, and then turn around and understand God can do it all. And that's what Jesus did with the feeding of 5,000 people. Faith is the victory. In closing, if you walked into this church today, felt the warm presence, there is love in this church, you can't deny it. Join us in prayers to God. I hope you also know that God is building your faith today. I hope you can feel it. I hope you are sitting there thinking, you know what? That sort of little fat guy's right. I can go, and me and God can do everything. I hope you are. He doesn't want you to leave this building today. His house from His presence without knowing Him but trusting Him but having a stronger faith today in God. Knowing that my faith can move mountains. Whatever the problem is, the faith in God can move mountains. God wants us and desires to do amazing things in our life. I cherish our prayer list. Because it's just a multitude of opportunity to stand in the gap and know that God is blessing. I love it. He wants to do that in our life. He wants you to know that there's victory in your faith. The question is, will you be moved to accept it today? Will you be moved to accept God today? Will you open your heart to this message? Will you walk from this place? Knowing that you have the power of God in your life. You've experienced God differently today. And you know that you can go and bring glory to God. If you don't know that, if you question that, you must first know this. You must be saved and reborn into the family of God to receive this power. You've got to be a child of God. If you do not know for sure that if you died right now, and nobody has the promise of tomorrow, today could be the last day. 
If this is your last day on the planet, if you know that if you die today, you will go to heaven. If you don't know that, you need to get right with God. You need to sit and be humble and know, I need to be saved today. Saved from my sin today. <clears throat> don't leave here without knowing that. You can be saved. Today I want us all to pray for that. For not only the people here, but the people we're in our lives that are not here. Why is 80 or 90% of this community not in this house of God, serving God, glorifying God? Why? Why are they home in bed? Because they don't know. They just simply don't know. When there's crucified my Lord, what did he say? Forgive them. They do not know. That's our responsibility, folks. Stand in faith. I can't save anybody, but I can share the gospel, can I? I can go and say, God loves you so much today. Do you know that? And the response mostly will be, not really. Let me help you today. Let me bring the light of Christ to your life so it will illuminate the path of salvation. Hmm. I want to pray for these people today. We need victory today. If you do not know that you've been born again, I don't want you to leave here today. I want you to know that I, I can be saved today. I want us to pray. If you are saved, pray with us and, and, and pray for those that are not saved here and other places. But right where you sit, if you are not right with God, you don't have to do a backflip. You don't have to run out to church. You don't have to do anything, but you can sit there and humbly say, Lord God, I'm a sinner. And we're going to surround you today with prayer that will lift you up to pray that you are forgiven of your sins and then you receive salvation today. But in this church, this church is special. This church is about love. I've never been to a church like this church. And I'm blessed and humbled to be the pastor of this church because I stand in love. I stand in God's presence if you don't know it, I want you to join us today. Matter of fact, please stand with me and join me in prayer. As we close. Heavenly Father, we ask for your power and love be displayed today. The hearts of anyone that does not know you. We need all to be drawn closer to you. We ask that you bless each and every heart and soul here. If there's any amongst us that do not know you, have not been reborn, we are praying that you open their hearts and minds today to know that we all have sinned, Romans 3.23. We've all come short of the glory of God. The price of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, Romans 6.23. And we know that if we can ask God to forgive us, He will, 1 John 1.9. He will forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. We ask you, Lord God, to cleanse the heart of anyone here. Strengthen those that are here that are saved to share this story with others. Time is late. We ask that you put a burden by the Holy Spirit. Convict the hearts of those who are not saved to humbly bow and accept you today. As you say in Revelation 3, you stand at the door of the heart and you're knocking. We ask that you continue to knock. Today, let those that know you not open that door and invite you in. We ask your blessings on all that do not know you for your glory and their blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In faith, faith in God is the victory. When you leave here, share that love with others. Oh, we got a responsibility to love God and to love each other. Gotta share that love. <clears throat> Help them find the path to salvation, to eternal peace with God. Through Jesus our Lord, let us pray.